Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be making a card that was inspired by a pin I saw on Pinterest. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. I want to say a great big welcome back to my subscribers and regular viewers and if this is your first time to my channel I hope that by the end of this video you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. I used to host a collab here on YouTube called Oh So Inspired and each month the team and I would take one piece and create something that was inspired by that. Even though the collaboration is no longer going on, I do still take inspiration from what I see online all of the time. So I thought now, while we're at home maybe spending some more time perusing the internet for ideas or we have more time to craft, that I would start this series back up and just have it be me showing you how I was inspired and then hoping you will join along with me. If after watching my video today you are inspired to take inspiration from the same piece, I hope that you'll use the hashtag, hashtag I was oh so inspired. That way I can stop by your YouTube videos or your Instagram posts and see what you have created. Up on screen now is the piece that is inspiring today's creation. I loved how that wreath was stamped over that music note background. I do have that pin linked below if you want to go check it out. For my project today, I'm going to be using the Gina K Designs Wreath Builder templates, but instead of using one of her Wreath Builder stamp sets, I'm going to show you that you can use stamp sets you might already have if they just have little leaf and flower images within them. Now I didn't have any music note background paper, but I did find some Making Memories paper from 2009 that I thought might work well. We have one that's kind of text it looks like from a book and another one is just some vintage ledger paper. Once I get started on the process today I will go to a voiceover so if I leave you with any questions make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I got started today by cutting my paper down and I will be cutting two pieces that are three and three quarters inches wide by five inches tall. Now normally for the wreath builder you would cut squares in either three and three quarters or four inches but I've discovered lately that you can also use rectangles. You just need to make sure one of the sides is the three and three quarters or the four inches. Once those were cut down I got out my misty and my three and three quarter inch wreath builder template. I hold my template in my misty with my scotch blue removable tape. Now what I'm trying to do here is figure out where this would hit about halfway in that wreath builder template. So I kind of look at the kind of arrow opening in the top and the bottom. And then once I had that where I thought was centered vertically, I took a pencil and made a very light mark where the curved part meets the edge of the paper. And when I go later to line it up, I will make sure every time that that little mark is aligned with the corner when I turn it. I do the same thing for the notebook paper and then I am ready to start stamping. For my inks today, I will be using ink spots from Gina K Designs Winter Collection. I grabbed out Prickly Pear, Red Velvet, Christmas Pine, and Blue Denim. I just thought those went well with that vintage -y look paper. The first thing I'll be stamping today is a solid branch in Christmas pine. Now you'll see here when I ink up and stamp this the first time that the ink beads up on the stamp and it does not look very nice. Sometimes this happens with new stamps and sometimes it just happens on cheaper stamp sets. So what I usually do is I will clean that stamp off I will ink it up with some Versamark and then ink it up right after that with the color I want to stamp in. You'll see here that when I stamp it with the Versamark underneath it, you get a much crisper look. Mm -hmm. 
since that did kind of ruin that first piece, I went ahead and recut another piece of the line notebook paper and then I started stamping my wreath. Now if you do need to use that Versamark trick and you start to notice your stamp is beating up again, just re-clean your stamp off and apply some more Versamark and that usually helps it. I won't show you every step of this wreath, but once I was done with the line notebook piece of paper, I then put my text paper into the Misty and use that same branch all the way around. The next image on my wreath will be kind of an outline branch. This will be stamped in the blue denim ink and I did go ahead and ink that up with Versamark first and then I started doing all of my rounds. Now you'll notice here that it stamps off onto my misty background. If that happens to you, make sure to clean that off because you don't wanna get your fingers in it or the back of your paper and then start smearing it everywhere. But again, once I was done with the text paper, I then put in my lined paper and did that same stamping. The next stamp I'm going to use is going to be one of the larger flowers and I will be stamping this in the red velvet ink. Again, I used the Versamark before I inked it up with the Gina K Designs ink. Now one thing that I know I mentioned earlier but I haven't really pointed out is that you may have noticed that each time I do a turn, I do make sure that little pencil mark is lined up at the corner just so I ensure that my wreath is nice and even. For the last round of wreath stamping, I actually chose two tiny flowers from the set. I placed one along the outside of the wreath and one more toward the middle. I will ink these both up in prickly pear at the same time so I can do a little double duty. I do the same thing on both pieces of paper and then it is time to get my sentiment stamped. For my sentiment on my card today, I'm gonna to be using the So Grateful For You stamp. To ensure that no embossing powder sticks to where I don't want it to, I did use my embossing buddy on the pattern paper. And then I inked up my sentiment with Versamark. I want that to be nice and juicy for my embossing powder. And today I am using some red glitter embossing powder. I did cover that a couple times just to make sure I got everything. And then I will heat that up and heat set the powder. This was about the time that I realized that I did not center my text in the wreath. I did a sample off camera and never set it up for the wreath. So for the other copy, I did go ahead and clean off that stamp and reposition it on the Misty. And then later, I am still gonna use that other wreath because I spent a lot of time getting that ready. And I'll just show you how I kind of cover it up or make it look like that's exactly where I wanted that sentiment. Once I had the powder set on the second card, it was time to start assembling. I got out a craft card base. I got out two of those actually. And then I cut a couple pieces of red cardstock to three and seven eighths inches wide and five and one eighths inches tall. This just left a small red border around those focal points. Once that was matted, I then adhered these flat down to the card bases. Now my cards needed some sparkle, not only to help cover up the open area there on my sentiment, which you'll notice that I just put three gems down at the bottom of that first one, just to make it look like I had always wanted that sentiment a little bit higher on the card. I added, I think, five to each one, and here's a close-up look at the cards. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made my cards today, and even if you mess up, there's usually a way to fix it. If you did enjoy this video, I always appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope that you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools that I use in the video, I do have some links in the description box.